Hello all, welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle and today is a very special episode of Species Spotlight. In fact, this is our very first episode. To celebrate our pilot, let's focus on one of my personal favorite animals, the giant Pacific octopus. Now first things first, what is an octopus? Octopuses are members of the mollusk phylum, specifically the cephalopod class. This means they have arms and or tentacles and possess bilateral symmetry. Here's a fun language fact for you. The word cephalopod in Greek directly translates to head feet. Another fun language fact, octopus is a Latin word, so the plural of octopus is octopuses or octopodes, not octopi. Octopi is only acceptable for describing a pastry full of taco meat. Anyways, octopuses. Since they're invertebrates, they do not have a single bone in their body, which allows them to squish and squeeze into literally any space as large as their beak. The largest of octopuses can actually find openings less than 3 inches. Speaking of the largest, GPOs are the world's largest species of octopus capable of reaching over 150 pounds with arms reaching over 14 feet long. That's right, I said arms, not tentacles. Octopuses surprisingly don't have tentacles, rather arms. Anyway, back to size. To be that big, you have to eat a lot. So. Octopuses have quite the varied diet. They eat a lot of crustaceans, particularly crabs and shrimp, as well as small fishes, other mollusks, and even other octopuses. That's right, these curious creatures are cannibals. Sometimes, instead of mating, the female octopus will end up just straight up strangling the male and then eating him. Sounds a bit psychopathic, doesn't it? Imagine going up to your significant other and there's a 50 50 chance to either kiss you or straight up murder you. Quite fun! Not to worry, the females don't have it easy either. I'd rather go into detail about cephalopod matings in the future because first I have to get monetized in order to get demonetized, but let's save the cephalopod sex for another video, shall we? I will say, it's very gross and squishy, and unfortunately I've been subjected to too much information about that topic. Anywho, the basic gist. When a male octopus and a female octopus like each other very much and she doesn't want to murder him, they mate, and then he leaves. Octopus males are deadbeat dads, so he'll be eaten soon enough, don't worry. So the female, she prioritizes caring of the eggs. This is actually where it gets really sad. As she cares for her eggs, she enters the last stage of her life cycle. She doesn't eat, she doesn't leave her cave, she just spends every last second of her life guarding the eggs from any potential threats. And unfortunately, after the eggs hatch, the female will pass away. They literally give their lives for their offspring, which are about the size of a grain of rice when they hatch. And unfortunately, not many survive. They're plankton, so they're tiny microscopic organisms that are basically eaten by everyone. Octopuses are very interesting in terms of their lifespan. Everyone automatically assumes them to live a while, but the maximum lifespan of these guys, the largest and most well-known of the octopus, is about five years. Which, probably for an invertebrate, is a lot longer than it is for us, kind of like dog years, but... Still, only five years. Anywho, on that depressing note, let's switch topics. Let's talk about their intelligence. Now, GPOs are one of, if not the most intelligent of the invertebrates. They're capable of making and using tools, solving complex puzzles, and even display characteristics of distinct personalities. These aquariums that have octopuses have to constantly keep coming up with new ideas of how to enrich their brains, usually by giving them toys or other forms of enrichment devices. It's a very important task to keep them occupied because when they're bored, they can be, um, destructive. They have been recorded destroying expensive equipment and other forms of valves and thingamajiggies in their tanks. So yeah, a bored octopus is not something you want to have on display. Another fascinating fact about them is they can change color as well as their texture to match their surroundings. Unlike chameleons who do it based on emotions, cephalopods, particularly octopuses, do it almost exclusively for camouflage. And the weird thing about that is, octopuses are colorblind, yet they can detect and mimic colors to help them camouflage. So these guys have no idea what color they're turning to, all they know is they need to turn that color. Cephalopods 
are so weird and curious. I love them so much. They almost seem like they're from another planet. Not just like how they look, but also how their bodies work. Did you know that octopuses have three hearts and blue blood? Totally sounds like something straight out of Star Wars, but they're real and closer than you think. Well, closer for me because I live in Seattle and I'm like right in the Puget Sound where a bunch of these guys live, but still. These curious cephalopods are one of the most amazing animals I've come across, and I bet they're amazing for you as well. Well, thank you for joining me on the very first episode of Species Spotlight. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss an upload. Well, that's all for this episode. I'll see you all later.